Your Excellency, thank you for the opportunity to conduct this interview with you today. This year marks the 45th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between our countries. However, over the past five years, since the first meeting between President of Russia Vladimir Putin and President of the Philippines Rodrigo Duterte at the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in 2016, when memorandums on cooperation were signed, more has been done in our bilateral relations than over the last 20 years. What do you consider to have contributed to this sudden activization of relations between our countries? What is the reason for this turn towards cooperation with Russia? Yes, indeed, we've had formal relations for 45 years, but uh, for a good part of those uh, years, almost 40 years, um, our relations have not really been on the upswing that we have experienced now. And I think the very important reason for that was that it was a conscious decision on the part of uh, the leadership uh, of the Philippines to uh, reach out and develop relations. Um, we see now Russia as a country that uh, has great potential to be a partner for the Philippines. And um, in terms of uh, regional security, we feel that uh, Russia can contribute uh, particularly in areas of uh, security cooperation and non-traditional ones uh, like um, health uh, and uh, fighting terrorism. So we've missed opportunities in the first 40 years and we're making it up. And the second, I think, is the good uh, personal relationship between our leaders. Every time they've met, um, they've met in Peru, Vietnam, and twice here in, in uh, Russia, one in Moscow and one in Sochi, and uh, th there's a great uh, rapport between uh, the two leaders. So I think those uh, contribute to uh, closer relations now. This year has been declared the year of science and technology in Russia. From your perspective, is there any potential for the development of economic affairs between our countries in this sphere? Yes, I think there's great potential. In fact, we've laid the legal framework for it uh, with uh, discussions and negotiations between our concerned ministries of science and technology and Roscosmos and other um, agencies. So we're um, laying the groundwork for that. We see Russia as a very important source of possible technical and scientific cooperation. Um, everything from medical sciences to space exploration. So we have not tapped into that and we are eager to do that. And in the broader ASEAN sense, I think the all of ASEAN uh, agree that cooperation with Russia in this field is very important and there's, there's a growing consensus that this should be a part of our um, celebration of uh, relations between ASEAN and Russia. COVID-19 pandemic has turned out to be some kind of a test for the whole world. How has it affected the economic relations between Russia and the Philippines? Like any other uh, economic uh, relationship, it has been affected. We had many plans uh, for 2020, uh, but uh, the pandemic has, uh, has affected all of this. In terms of active economic cooperation, it continues. In fact, we continue to have um, Russians, Russian uh, businessmen, um, te technical people, uh, who still continue, we allow them to go to the Philippines, even though we have some restrictions, to uh, pursue their investments. Um, but um, it's a bit sad, but uh, we are determined to continue that cooperation. Uh, one of the most uh, important things we wanted to do in 2020 was to continue um, promoting the Philippines uh, in terms of trade and tourism uh, to Russia. Um, we have to admit we have not done that uh, quite as much as we would like to and Russia still uh, needs to know more about the Philippines and the same way that the Philippines need to know more uh, about uh, Russia. So I'm hoping 2021 will be a, um, that the momentum we built uh, before 2020 will continue into uh, 2021 and we will uh, push on with um, developing and strengthening our economic relations with Russia. You have served six years in Russia, which is quite a long time. And I'm sure you had a chance to explore many regions of our country. 
which ones are the most preferable for implementing business projects and in what spheres? The way we, our economies complement each other, it continues to be uh, Moscow and St. Petersburg, where the center of uh, uh, trade and investment uh, and even tourism is focused. But we're very uh, enthusiastic about Russia's decision uh, past few years to uh, open up uh, Russia's Far East, particularly uh, Vladivostok. We see a great potential in terms of logistics, in terms of energy cooperation. Uh, it's um, one of those things that we see because it's a five-hour chartered flight between Vladivostok and uh, Philippine and Manila and even Cebu. Um, and there used to be a lot of um, tourists, Russian tourists flying out of Vladivostok. Um, as Russia continues to focus its attention and its resources in the Far East, Far East, Far East Russia, we um, hope that we can also take advantage of uh, Russia's policy of turning to the East. That's why the Eastern Economic Forum is very important for us. It's an opportunity for our businessmen and decision makers to uh, go to Fefu Island and, uh, I mean, to Ruski Island, to Fefu, and to see and meet uh, Russian businesses. The sessions are very informative. The uh, displays and the exhibits are also very, very, very informative, particularly for a country like the Philippines who uh, um, still needs to know more about Russia, about opportunities. Um, energy cooperation also in the Far East is, is some, something that uh, we see as a great potential. President of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte, visited Russia twice, in 2017 and in 2019. However, the Russian leader has never visited the Philippines during the whole history of the bilateral relations. Is there any chance that the two leaders can meet in Manila in the nearest future? My president uh, has made a formal invitation, of course, uh, for a return visit. Um, and we, are, we would prepare and we will prepare a very warm welcome for uh, President Putin. We understand the circumstances don't, may not allow it at this time, but it will be a very historic uh, visit. No uh, Soviet or uh, Russian leader has uh, visited uh, the Philippines, and um, we would like to see this happen. I think it would be very important uh, because it would bring great attention to the potential of our relationship and the role that Russia could play and does play uh, in our region in terms of uh, um, strengthening our economies and, of course, in terms of uh, building greater understanding and trust in, in the region. So it's something uh, we look forward to and hope will happen uh, once circumstances allow. Before being appointed to Russia, you served as Deputy Chief of the Mission to the United States. Which country was more of interest to work in for you? Are there any fundamental differences between Iraq and Russia and the United States? There are uh, fundamental uh, differences, uh, definitely because our relationship with the uh, United States um, spans, uh, um, it's been uh, it's very deep, it's very historic. Uh, we have a shared history. Um, we have about two million uh, Filipinos or Filipinos, Americans of Filipino descent in, in the United States. So. I'd say um, it's very different. Um, it's an old and long-standing relationship with a strategic partner. Um, well, Russia is uh, the relationship, although it's 45 years uh, old, is, is young as relationships go. And uh, we have not yet tapped uh, all the potentials of that relationship. So um, that's uh, basically the difference. There's uh, a lot more to discover about Russia and almost Every day here, uh, as we study, uh, as embassies do, uh, uh, the dynamics in Russia and its interests, there's, there's always, uh, we find space in uh, areas where we can um, cooperate and build partnerships. And I think that that's basically the, the difference. Now, in terms of working, uh, we deal with, um, in terms of State Department and Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they're all uh, here in Russia, they're all very professional, so um, there's uh, very uh, little difference in terms of diplomatic work. In terms of dealing with the private sector, I think uh, one of the biggest uh, advantages we had in the United States is our ability to uh, 
uh, so deal with them in their language. So that's a big advantage. Here we have to adjust um, to uh, working in, in the Russian language, particularly dealing with uh, the private sector here. Uh, no problems with the academic sector, of course, we have great cooperation, but with the private sector, uh, not just Moscow and St. Petersburg, but um, all the way up to the Far East, uh, we, we do have the big difference is, uh, is language. And we hope to overcome that with more Filipinos uh, taking interest in studying Russian language. There are now centers in the Philippines that teach uh, Russian language in Cebu and in uh, Manila. So I think we've started something good here and we'll eventually build closer, not just relations uh, between our countries, but between our uh, peoples. And the main question, will you be missing Russia? Oh yes, I will be uh, missing Russia uh, very much. The, the seasons, or my favorite, the turning, the changes of the season. In the Philippines, we have wet and dry seasons, so sometimes the year can't tell one part of the season, so yeah, but uh, in, in Russia, the uh, uh, seasons, the change seasons, uh, the great and warm people. Uh, I was surprised actually with the great food that you had here in Russia. I, uh, I enjoyed that uh, thoroughly. And all the friendships we, we developed, particularly with the ASEAN Center in, in MGIMO. Your Excellency, on behalf of the ASEAN Center and Gimo University, I would like to thank you for being a friend of the Center and the whole University for a long time during your mission to Russia and before it. Thank you for this conversation just a few days before your departure to Manila. See you in the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, thank you very much.